Welcome, welcome, welcome to El Latino Ruido. Uh, my name is Javier Luis. I am Johnny Boricua Prince Dones. Welcome, people, welcome. What's up? How was your weekend? Nada, nada. It was a uh, normal, quiet weekend. I went out. Well, uh, actually, I went out with Nelson. I had to, oh, how's I Nelson? Went to BJ's. Back on Pral. Back on Pral. Fui te comprar. Get gas. Get gas. That was the highlight. Yeah, it was the highlight. I bought some mixed nuts. Shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> and a few other things. You know, we went with my Listen. son. We hung out. We yeah. went to uh, uh, Alcomed, actually. This. Uh, uh, cheesesteak place in um, uh, Co-op City. Mm. It's not bad. The cheesesteaks are pretty good. I felt like yeah. I was in Philly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, I want to explore some places, some restaurants in the Bronx and stuff like that. Um, when was the last time you went to, what is that seafood spot in um, in the Bronx where everybody goes? Uh, seafood City in, uh, in um, City Island, you mean? City Island. City well, Island, yes. um, I, as a retiree from MTA, we have every last Thursday of the month yeah. We all gather at uh, Seafood City yeah. and hang out and stuff okay. like that. Um, the food is decent. you know. Yeah. They have a lot of good places. Now, the one at the end, I don't remember the name of it. It's not Sammy's? Is it Sammy's? It could be Sammy's. Yeah. It could be Sammy's. All the way at the end right. where the turnaround is. Right. And that's where everybody goes. You'll yeah. meet everybody from that you haven't seen in years. Right. And um, City Island is hustling. It's bustling, especially even in the winter time. Yeah, during the pandemic, it was, it was decent, but it was mostly takeout. You, know, yeah. you pick up your food and, yeah. and, 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 and take it home with you. But lately, we been getting a lot of these, the bike, dirt bikers and stuff like that. The the guys who make noise, you right? Know? So it's 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 hurting, not hurting business, but you're hurting the whole entire ambiance and the and the um, okay and the feel of being in the Bronx but not in the Bronx, right? You know, but right. I remember the first time I went to um, City Island was with my family. Um, Actually, a couple of family members came from Puerto Rico, and they said, let's all go get in the car. We went, and I remember being on the edge and seeing the water. Oh, yeah. And it was summer because we sat outside to eat. And, but that was years ago, and the last time I went to City Island, I performed at Tito po and I, I didn't. I performed at a restaurant down there, but I ate at Tito Puente's restaurant. Oh, I went there when, uh, when it first opened. Right. Uh, I only went once, and uh, the food was awesome. Yeah, the surf and turf. I had the surf and turf. Amazing. Oh, we had the paella. Paella. Oh, Man, who doesn't love a good seafood meal? Yeah, especially from there. And, and a lot of the stuff is is local. Yeah. but Which is good. From what I understand, there's only one way to get in. Oh, yes. One there's way to get in and one way to get out. So there's no other... Well, there's side streets and stuff, but there's no other way out of the island. There's no... One way in right. and one way out. That's so crazy. They close that off, bro. You better learn how to swim, hide in somebody's house. And there's whatever. usually high volume traffic. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And it's only a two lanes that way, two lanes this way. If so you it's got one lane block, yeah. you're in trouble. So is it the same kind of heavy traffic on the weekends that is the weekdays? Is it better to go during the weekday? You're or? better off going during the week. Yeah. Um, because especially if you, if you can swing it, go during the day. Mm. A lot of people not home from work yeah. yet and stuff like that. But on the weekends, when yeah. it's nice out, yeah. well, be that day, bro. You gotta leave early and plan to be there all day. See, I don't know if I want to go through that though. Yeah, yeah. I it's, mean, it, it's oh, you what you can do, you could always park the. Uh, there's um, uh, they got restaurants. As soon as you get into the island, you make a left turn. Right. You got uh, I think it's JPs or PJs. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Very decent restaurant. Very nice restaurant. Or you could park the car and just walk. Yeah. The, the island is beautiful because the island is very historic. Okay. They have a lot of uh, uh, historical places to visit. They got the nice little mom and pops. They got the uh, little boutiques where you can trinkets and stuff. As you make your way down, you're making a day of it, mm. and it's wonderful. They got the ice cream factory there. They got oh man, it's great. You yeah. have a good time. I want to. I, 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 you know, I'll give it a shot. I'll it's go. not just going I'll, to I'll eat go. and yeah. then come back. Yeah. There are a lot of things to do in City Island. Is it? Yeah, they got bands there. The local bands that come in there. You got the eateries outside. Yeah. You can get yourself a drink and stuff like that. It's fun. It's yeah. fun. It's it, it's a, you can make a day of it. Yeah. But, uh, we'll start. Yeah, you know, the Silly Island is a, it's, it's a it's a fun place to go. You can yeah. bring the kids and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. You have the traffic of course, but you know yeah. they have parking lots. Yeah. If you Wait, outside of, of City Island? No, 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 inside City Island. As soon as you get in, they have parking yeah. lots. You know, I mean, first you got to get in there because sometimes it's like an hour just to get to the bridge. That's what I heard. It all depends on when you get there. Después, I would say after wow, don't plan to get there after 12 or 1 o'clock, especially yeah. on a good day. Yeah. You're going to be standing. You're going to be there for a long time. Yeah. So wait, what what makes City Island so popular? Is it that the food is cheap? The food the, the food is cheap, and you have a lot of places to eat, and it's like a, a, a getaway from the city. Yeah. It's like it's like the suburbs, but you're still in the city, within the city, because City Island is still the Bronx. Yeah. 
You know, and, and it's fun. You got the food. You got people gather there all the time. They come from all over the place. Yeah. I got friends that come in from Brooklyn, yeah. Connecticut, New Jersey, even from way up north and yeah. stuff. They come down and City Island is like the place to go. Hmm. You know, but the only bad thing is it, it's it's hard because of the traffic. And at the end, you have to make U-turns. Gotcha. Even the buses got to make the U-turn and stuff. Gotcha. That's the only reason why. If there was a way in, one way in and another way out, yeah. further down, then yeah. it's a different story. Right. Because you can get circulation, but right. everybody stays in. Right. And you can always find parking. Yeah. the um, There's one um, restaurant. It's not in the Bronx. It's in Brooklyn called Nick's Lobster or something like that. I remember going there. I guess like around the Far Rockaway area. Oh, that's way out there. Yeah. Um, that's almost Long Island. You get three <laughs> lobsters for $20. Whoa. Three lobsters. Now, how's so what? It delicious. Really? Yes, yes, wow. yes. Um, this they was must years get it local then. Th- yeah, this was years ago, though. Well, this well, was, um, now, we really. used to have lobster dinner, and there was so much lobster that the next morning we used to make lobster scrambled eggs. <sighs> you ever had hey, lobster? No, I'm not, I'm not a lobster. I'm not much of a show. Oh, my uh, gosh. Lobster tuna, scrambled eggs. Tuna egg. fish and, 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 and some scallops. and I'm yeah. just starting to actually get into fish with my brother Nelson. Yeah. but um, He's a fisherman. Nah, he, he does. He's got a boat. Yeah. But he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't, Nelson, hasn't you heard what he said. He yeah. hasn't got out in a while, but uh, we plan to do him. One time yeah. he caught. Him, him and his some friends, they caught uh, some bass over 20, really? 25 pounds. Yeah. And you know bass got a lot of meat. That's a small where, boat. Where do they fish City Island on the Sound. Really? Yeah, they go out. They got spots. Yeah. They, uh, they go out. They'll anchor. Or they'll, they'll have fun. And they'll put the poles out, chill, have a beer, or yeah. come in algo, and then one bites, you bring it in. Man, I've not been fishing in years. Yeah, it's yeah. Hey, we got we to gotta do it. We got to do yeah. it. Yeah. The last it's fun. time. It's fun. I was, um, I was, my brother wasn't even a teenager. When oh, we wow. Were. And we fish a flounder. Flounder okay. was delicious. Well, they have it's different types of the seasons. Yeah. You have bluefish, uh, what is it, blackfish, yeah. and, and uh, bass season, all that other stuff, striper. Yeah. yeah. And um, snapper, I think. They got red snapper también. Yeah. But um, he, he, you go out to have fun, and, and you get a license, it's free. Yeah. Saltwater fishing license. Yeah. And it's good for a year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with seafood comes with drinks, and. Um, yeah. <laughs> You got to know how to pair it right. Um, oh, absolutely. You know. And it's funny because people say, is, does, is there really different types of wine that go with different types of food? Oh, absolutely. yes, there is. Yeah. yeah, there is. You just have to know. You just can't have. You got to read up on it. Uh, whatever kind of bottle of wine with whatever no, meat. No, it doesn't work no, it that It doesn't way. work. And, you know, um, like sometimes when I cook, I even, aside from drinking the wine with my meal, I cook some meats and fish with white wine. Yeah. You know, it gives it a whole different yeah, And flavor. the thing is, with the heat, the alcohol is going to evaporate. Yes. So you got the flavor of the wine itself. Right, right, and right. And it right. gives it, does it, it, some people marinate right. in the uh, in wine and whatever else they're going to put in stuff. Yeah, yeah. And you have to read, man. And it's like it's, it's like a science. Yeah. It's, this is why these professional wine tasters and yeah. stuff, they make a lot of money. Yeah. They I make mean, a lot of money because their recommendations go yeah. far with people. I'm very intrigued with the whole process of winemaking and the fermentation. And I've been to a winery. Um, Upstate Brotherhood Winery, you ever heard of it? Nah, I'm really not, nice. I'm not, I'm not much into uh, really nice drinking and stuff. It's it's nice. It's uh, they give you a tour. Um, they show you the barrels and uh, they do wine tasting. Oh, I think it's like for ten bucks. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, yeah but and you come back and as long as no, you're not no. driving. <laughs> and they have um, a wine making contest where they have these barrels full of grapes. And you get to get in it barefoot and stomp on it. Ah. I do, my only thing is I hope that they throw everything out because these people are tourists. You don't know what they got yeah, on their exactly. feet. Yeah, exactly. Or the, so. either that or whatever you stomp, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be taking home. Listen, listen. <laughs> you go, mira, this thing tastes like toes. Se, mira una uña. <laughs> wait, wait. Man, they, uh, who's, who's is this? But uh, I remember I, the first time I heard about that, Yeah. I love Lucy. Yes. In the episode where yes, she was yes, yes. pressing the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the grapes with the with the feet, and from what I understand, it's still a tradition in in um, Italy. Yeah, yeah. Well, in Italy, better everything um, people better have some good feet. You I don't think there's feet fungus out there. I don't want to smell and drink feet. No, 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 no. Bad enough, I don't kiss feet. No, but I mean, pa- p- piggybacking off of uh, wine, um, we are going to have an interview and a tour. With Port Morris Distillery. That's one right. Of the owners, Willie Valentin, who we grew up with. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I remember Willie um, 
running, and it's always in the summertime. I ran into Willie. We were both teenagers. I want to say like 14 years old, of that, 15. Uh, last year, right? Yeah, that was last year. <laughs> and we would run into each other right on the street in the middle of summer on 101st and Columbus okay. Avenue. That's right we over there by 840, between 845 and right. Um, 865. Right. Um, and we would just stop and talk. And I always remember Willie being so positive and enthusiastic and always saying, we're going to make it. We're both going to make it. Um, he would talk about um, whatever he was planning on doing in his career. And right. I would talk about music. He would always ask me about my music. And, you know, we met like a couple of times. And I think he lived in 865. 865 right? and then 830 también. 830. 830 um, Amsterdam. Right. So right. I... As you know, I I was born in 865, right. and we we moved out of there when I was five years old. Right. But we still kept our friends and stuff. Right, and it's funny right, right. how small this world is. Right, you know, and you both made it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I follow Willie because um, I've seen his interviews and uh, I've heard about the process, and I admire. I always admire people that grew up with us. Yes. Within the Douglas Project community, and that have made it. You know, um. What rerun? What was that show with rerun back in the days? That was um, what's, what's happening? happening. What's happening? The mother. I can't remember her name. But she, she lived was, in a sixty five. Right. She was um, Mabel, Mabel King. Mabel King. Mabel yes. King. Yes. Mabel yes. King. Remember? I remember her. Yes. She was a resident of Douglas Project. Yeah. Um, and of some other actors um, as well. Lawrence Hilton Jacobs, Freddie Boom Boom Washington from Welcome Freddie Back Bo Carter, right. grew up across the street from right. me at eight twenty six in Look the uh, Diana's building. Yeah. Yep, and uh, we have, uh, oh, and also this was after um, after I left and stuff, uh, uh, 140 West, 104th Street, across from one, uh, PS 145, Mackay Pfeiffer, okay. the actor, Mackay okay. Pfeiffer. He gave a shout out to Douglas Projects in one of his interviews a couple of years ago. Wow, look at and that. We got some, um, and I met, he wasn't from there, but uh, at the uh, community center, yeah. I met um, Earl the Pearl Monroe, the basketball okay. player. From okay. the, uh, was it okay. the Knicks, I think it was? Yeah. And and we met him there by chance. He was yeah. there, and and it was like, oh wow. Yeah, Ooh. a lot of big people come out from yeah, the Douglas yeah. Project. Yeah, we had a couple of people that came out of there and stuff. Yeah. And um, it yeah. was I tell you, we we were it was the best place to grow up. It was, it was, was the best place to grow up. It was. So, mi gente, uh, you don't want to go away and miss this one. Stay tuned um, as we go to Port Morris Dil Distiller Distillery. Distillery. In the South Bronx. In the South Bronx, um, Pitorro is a moonshine that was created in Puerto Rico. Um, illegally, and I kind of almost do remember that with the Kenepas. That's a, like a other version yeah. of it. But he has his own distillery here legally, <laughs> and um, I did go there once and perform at his uh, establishment. Okay. So we're going to go there, uh, 780? 780 East 133rd well, Street. Yep. So mi gente, this is a Latino Real. Don't go anywhere and join us for our interview with Willie Valentin, Port Morris Distillery. You're going to love it. See you soon. What's up, guys? What's up, guys? What's Here up? we are. What's up? Hey, come on down. Come on in, Hey, what's going on? Come on down, man. How's Thank you for having us. This is awesome. This is awesome. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, people, this is uh, Port Morris Distillery, yes. where we make the uh, famous Pitoro. He is the uh, proprietor here, Mr. Willie Valentin. Yes. And uh, we're going to talk to him and uh, find out about his... Uh, his career uh, and uh, about the location here at Fort Morris. Yeah. Willie, first I want to ask, and I always start with this with that. <laughs> Who's Willie Valentin? Who's? Well, um, um, the young Willie Valentin is a young kid from the projects, yes. um, from Douglas Projects originally. Um, went to school, PS 163, Lincoln Academy, then Brandeis. Okay. Um, after Brad Nice, I didn't continue to college. I went right to the workforce. Um, did some real estate. And then um, 
and then I found sheet metal. Or sheet metal found me. I'll say I became a local 28 sheet metal worker. Um, but even even while I was a sheet metal worker, I was always doing other things. Always doing other things. Um, in the, tried the music industry for a while, really. Okay. Um, so I did some salsa recordings, um, performed for about two years, okay. traveled for about two years, um, enjoyed two years. <laughs> I'm sure. Yes. It was. It was a. It was a really amazing time. Yeah. Um, in my life, I um, I then opened up a recording studio okay. um, where we were doing recordings. I did it because I wanted to record my own stuff right. in my own location. Right. Um, but we were doing other people's stuff also in the, in the recording studio. So it was a recording studio slash video editing suite. Okay. Um, one stop so shop. It was a one stop shop. Yeah, yeah. Come in, you know, I had a psych, psych room, I had, you know, an editing suite, and I had nice. the, the recording studio, which was an amazing studio. I can imagine. Um, so we did that for a while, um, and then the f bottom fell out. You know, that's when um, Pro Tools came into the right. scene, um, and then you no longer needed a huge Studio, you know, right. I needed two inches. You yeah. know, I needed. Yeah. You needed the things that people people used to use to record right. and use it. Right. Um, so people no longer need it. You know, you had Pro Tools had a a, a really like an HD system, but they also had like a, a small system where people could go record at home. Right. So you no longer are getting two hundred dollars an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Fifty dollars an hour. Right. Basically, it killed it. You know, so it really killed the the. Um, the music industry as far as studios go. Right. Um, so I was fortunate enough to sell the recording studio to a producer that was already there. Okay. And his name was uh, Self. Okay. And he did a lot of stuff. He did Blige, you know, he was always awesome. at the studio awesome. um, recording. So he did a lot of big names. Right. right. Um, he did uh, uh, DMX, may he rest in peace. Like nice. he did all these. You know, big names, right. and he was using the studio a lot. So I had, I had, I you know, when I was ready to sell, I said, "Listen, you know, I, I made a deal with him. I'm like, you know, why don't you yeah. stay? You mean you you're using it most of the time, and just pay me, you know?" And awesome. So, well, gave, uh, yeah, so I gave him a year to to you know, he gave me the deposit. I gave him a year to pay me off. He paid me off within a year, and we took that and we just invested in here. Oh, right. okay. So okay. we were able to kind of. Move that around, so. right? So, so we asked who would William Malatini, yeah, I'm a construction worker right. by trade right. and a businessman at heart. Nice. There you nice. go. Yeah. 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 Well, talk to us about Pitoro. What is Pitoro? Where does it come from? What's the history? And what made you decide to bring it to the United States? I mean, that's like what, two, what, two part question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think that was a three part question. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, for the people that don't know what Pitoro is, yeah. Pitoro is a, is a Puerto Rican style moonshine. Okay. Um, and it's been done in Puerto Rico for hundreds of years. Like it's, it's a tradition, a traditional drink in Puerto Rico. Okay. Um, so they used to they used to use it either Pitoro was only made you know for the holidays, or um, when someone was having like a, a sweet sixteen yeah. or you know a major party, they bring out the Pitoro for right. people. You know. Right. Um, so after just after several years, it started becoming a little more popular. Um, but it's, if it's in somebody's history, it's in somebody's history. It's in, it's in your lineage. It's in your, Absolutely. Yeah, right, it's, it's, in your it's background. basically the DNA. <laughs> yeah, the DNA. So yeah. It's in the DNA of Puerto Rican. Yes, For yes. sure. Everybody has somebody who's either affiliated to Pitoro, yes. knows a distiller, or has a grandma who's curious. Exactly. Right? Wow. <laughs> yes, uncle, yes, that's right. Cousin, like, it was, it was... It's never been a lost art, either. No. Right. Like, you know, there's a lot of things that go in our history and they say, oh, they don't do it anymore. Right. Like, they don't do it anymore. Like, like for a while, a long time, Boma Blair died out. Right? Yes. Like, it did. Like it did. And, and I think the generations, you know, that were there in front of me back then, they started bringing it back. So now Boma Blair is super popular again. Right. Um, at least here in the States, because growing up, I, I, I didn't realize it. So yeah. I was going to Puerto Rico. Right. You know, you went to kind of here. But now, there's this big kind of um, the big movement to get it back to get it right. back, which is which is amazing. Yeah. Now you have kids, you know, dancing more and and it's it's an art that's yeah, it's right. an art that's and it basically back. guarantees you it know, that it's going to keep going for it's more it's generations. Going to continue yes, yes. So we thought of it that same thing. Gotcha. It's just a generational um, 
the product that gets passed down from generation to generation to generation, and somebody in your family taught you how to make it. Exactly, That's yes. Right. So for us, um, we learned from my partner's, from my partner's uncle, my partner's uncle, um, learned from his uncle when he was 14. And I think okay. he, he was like 60 or 65 when he taught us how to do it. Okay. Um, so when we, we, when we set out to do, we thought we set out to, to create this brand, um, we had to convince him to kind of come from New York. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> hard. Usually, yeah, uncle. Yeah, the uncle. Okay. So he was, you know, he, was, he came to New York. He stayed with us about five years. Okay. Um, and he taught us everything he knew about distilling. Okay. Um, and then from there, me and my partner took it one step further, right. and we started flavoring it and learning how to flavor it, learning how to um, the different techniques on what we needed because. When we first started, we started in a in a still, in a still that you would see in Puerto Rico. Right, right. Same still. Right. Um, but we knew if we wanted to compete with the the, the American market, mm -hmm. we had to upgrade our game to something that everyone else is using. Right. right. Um, if it was up to him, he would have he would have had me build because I built our first still. Nice. Okay. You know, I built it by right. hand. Um, I built our first still. If it was up to him. He would have had me build ten of them wow. and run all ten of them. Right. Do you yeah. have that still here? Okay. Yeah, I'll show it to you when we get into this. Into nice, right nice. Um, but but he but we knew that we had to you know kind of up our game. Yeah. So we mm -hmm. purchased the still okay. um, um, from Germany. Okay. I mean, we were looking for New York, uh, United States stills, but we right. couldn't find them. Right. We couldn't find them when we purchased it, so we had to go out to Germany and buy. Right. I still bought a Christian car, which has been great. Okay. It's like the Mercedes Benz is still. Nice. Um, and we bought that still, we started using that. So okay. we started, actually, when we had that delivered, he didn't even want to look at it. Wow. Like, I could yeah, imagine. Like, like, tradition, he was, he's like, 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 he was like, uh, you know. Eso no va a ser Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. You know, and I was like, I told my partner, yo, we have to, we have to turn it on. Yeah. We have to turn it on. So we turned it on one, one day. And and he's distilling with his small still. Um, and that small still takes you about five hours wow. to get your first drip, or at least three hours. To get wow, your first okay. Drip, right? So when we turn this still on, like in half an hour, wow. it starts dripping. So he starts turning around. <laughs> yeah. and, he's looking back. and then he starts looking back. He's like, Eso ya está tirando. Está tirando. So, so then he kind of turns all the way around and he goes over there. He, he starts to, to smell it. He says, Wow, oh yeah. Well, he won. Like, well, he won. Well, so he goes and he, he tastes it and he's like, Oye, no perdió nada. That's, 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 that's what you do. You get paid dirt. That's, 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 that's it. That, that was the last time. I'm sure. That, and, uh, and what I'm sure he, he's proud of. That, that you maintain the, the recipe. Yes. The recipe doesn't change. The re recipe doesn't change. At least the shine. The shine. Right. Yeah, the shine itself. The shine itself doesn't change. Um, everything else we did was different to what he's ever done. Like, he we, he took us to this level, but we have to get to this level. Right. And we have to get to that level without it. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So now, moving forward, when we start teaching our children, then our children will be at this level and then they'll have to take it to the next right. level. You know, so it's just going to be a But you maintain the core we recipe the core, and, yes. The core recipe. Which that's that's, 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 that's core what keeps recipe. the tradition going, basically. Yeah. Even yeah. though you gave it a little turbo boost here and there, but yeah. los raíces yeah. se quedaron lo mismo. Yeah. Los raíces se quedaron. That's, that's, so, that's what's beautiful. So, so I would say the pitorro is, 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 is a cultural product right. that has been passed down our lineage. That's a big thing. Decades, decades, decades. Like, I like, mean, even, even to, to, to tell the story of my grandma, but she rests in peace. When we, when I started here, and I, and I go and I tell her, you know, the projects. Yeah. Yeah. And she says, okay. I said, I'm doing a sendo pitorro. She said, mira, no me traiga la puta. Eso es ilegal. No quiero saber de eso. No me lo traiga. Right. I'm like, no, my viejita, listen, we're the first ones to do it legally in the United States. I'm going to try to hacerlo legal. She says, de verdad. I said, sí, mamita, totalmente legal. Traeme una botella. 
Comida, wow. hace, pero viejita, tú no bebes. Si se dan, olvídate de esto, trae una botella. Yeah. Right, so, I take her a bottle. And, you know, I can sit on my feet, take her to my house, I'll come in with chuleta, I'll come in with chuleta. Ah, oh, Maria, yeah. yeah. Papa Frida, like, yeah. that was, you know, that was my stop. Um, it's like two, two weeks passed, maybe three. And I get there, and I'm eating my chuleta, you know, rice and beans, and my grandma don't drink. Right. Like, the most she drinks, is maybe a Mani Chevy once a year. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. once a year in Christmas, they have sacado el Mani Chevy or un poquito poquito, but she doesn't yeah. drink. She doesn't right. drink. So I, uh, I get there, she takes out this bottle. She goes like this. As a matter of fact, you're gonna see there's a bottle called Our. This bottle called Our. Oh, you named it after her. Yeah. Oh, awesome. okay, cool. So she goes like this, and I go, "Hey, what is this? Wait, I gotta show you the original one, because the original one has her picture on it." This is the original one. Yeah. There's a yeah. original one out there. But she goes like this. She goes, it looks good. Like she goes, and le digo, viejita, ¿qué es eso? She says, es el tupidor. I said, no, viejita, eso, eso está un color brown. She says, sí, está curado. I'm like, ¿cómo que curado? Like, she says, bueno, no le diga a nadie. I come in, she said, no le diga a nadie. I turned on my iPhone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell nobody. So I said, cuéntame. Uh, and she says, bueno, um, el papá mío era pitorrero. Okay. I'm like, de verdad, viera. Yo me hear that. She says, sí, mi papá era pitorrero. Y que yo era la que estaba encargada de hacerle lo, el sabor. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, de verdad, vida, sí. Y... y I said, pero viejita, tú no bebes, ¿por qué tú nunca bebiste? Porque, tú, o sea, una persona que viene de raíces de pitorro, sí. tú nunca bebiste. She says, bueno, <laughs> hay una historia, hay una historia de eso. <laughs> a la hija, okay, cuéntame. She says, she goes, eh, yo estaba siempre curando y yo cogía un, una copita, she says, she says, she says, yo cogía una copita para mí, en cada vez que lo curaba y lo ponía en un vaso y lo guardaba. Y cada vez yo le cogía una copita al viejo y lo curaba. Yeah. Y me quedaba con un vasito. Hace eso tú bebías. Y dice, no, yo no bebía. Pero como niño al, al fin, mm. ¿sabes? Tenía 12 años, creo que era. Y dijo, niño al fin, siempre quería, ¿sabes? Tener un poquito. Sí. Y dice, hasta un día yo veía que mi papá fumaba su cigarro y su pitorro, y yo quería hacer como él, yo cojo y prendo un cigarro y me doy un pitorro. Y estoy en la, en el, en la yarda con un cigarro y un pitorro. Y me di una borracha. <risa> y después... ¿No? You haven't heard the rest of it. Y me doy una borrachera y después me llama mi viejo y me dice, oye, tienes que llevarle una botella de pitorro al vecino. Eso voy yo bajando el rico y me ha caído de cabeza en un rico de agua y no me podía salir, me estaba ahogando y el vecino me vio y me salva y me vio borracho, me vio por la nada y me mandó para la casa wow. cuando llego para mi casa, él le dijo al, al papá mío y otra pena me dio a mayor wow. 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 So, so, um, we, we, we tasted that, you know I had a drink with her yeah. of the pitorra, and it was amazing. Wow. You know, it was, uh, it was, uh, raíz de maguey. Okay. Um, pasas, ciruela, un poquito de caleta. Okay. Um, all mixed up, and that's the traditional. That's amazing. That's great. Yeah. That. So basically, yeah. abuela gave you, te dio la bendición? Sí, yeah. me dio la bendición. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, uh, this is, this is, this is, this looks, I mean, it looks tasty. It's like, delicious. Yeah. Oh, so man. I'll let you taste it, because this is our, this is how it looks. So this is how it does. Um, oh boy! Right? Wow. So this is how it's made. Oh, la right. cura. Yes. Esta, the you know, I'm gonna ask you why you do that. I remember, and you tell me this is the good road map. I remember in the projects at home as a kid, I would open, there was a, that small little closet next to the bathroom, I would open it and there was a bottle with canepas in it. That's a form of pitorro, but that one was called Bili. 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 Okay. So Bili is native to, I believe, Vieques. Okay. And what they do, they take the pitorro and instead of infusing it, they shake all of the, the canepa. Right. 
husk off okay. of it and that goes into the yes. thing. Oh. And then they leave that sit for a long time. Yeah, I remember that. Wow. So, so yeah, so that's called Bili. And this one. This is your abuelitas. This is abuelita. Wow. This is abuelitas. So this is the truth. I can smell it, man. This is the truth. Oh, oh, too bad we don't have smell of vision. Thank God your smell came back, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> Definitely have to keep one for the camera. Oh my All god. Right, so I'm gonna let you taste. Wow, I do smell that. Yeah. Mina, and I have not eaten anything today. Well, so did you take a little taste? I don't feel you up. He said that one. Alright, quien te manda a venir to put all about what I'm for. You ain't gonna? Wow. Cheers. Salud. 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 Bendicion, Grandma. Bendicion, Mommy. And Bendicion, Grandma. Oh my gosh, this is delicious. Wow, that is smooth. Yes. Whoa, that is smooth. Ooh, give me chills. <laughs> wow, look at this. Look at it. I got goosebumps. Yeah. Yep, and that one is 100, wow. 100 proof. That's 100 proof. It's 100 proof. And that's, you know, it's been sitting there for maybe, that's been sitting there maybe three years. Wow. Three years, and all I do is I top it up. That's amazing. That is, I top oh, it up. That is awesome. So that's yeah. La Vejita's, um, 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 Recipe. So if you if you if you if you see if you ask yeah. people in your family, somebody's gonna have a pitorro. Yeah. Everybody will have yeah, a pitorro. Yeah. Story. Mira mi gente, well, come you know to uh, pitorro. Yo me voy a comprar una una botella de abuelita también. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 This is very very good. Oh my God, it's so smooth. I can feel it. It's still going down warm. It's yeah. like it's taking its time to go down. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So wow. That's my awesome. next question. Why the Bronx? Why did you choose to open up a distillery in the Bronx? So two reasons. Two reasons. This is a Puerto Rican brand. Right. It's a Puerto Rican brand. Um, and although all of the distilleries, when we started 10 mm -hmm. years ago, um, had, had made their, their, their footprints in Brooklyn, because Brooklyn was kind of that, that hipster kind of uh, distillers and breweries. Yeah. They were all right. in Brooklyn. Right. Um, there was nobody in Queens, nobody in the Bronx. No, everybody was just headed to Brooklyn. So everybody was rushed to Brooklyn. And there was only like five distillers at that time, right. all Americano. No Latinos. Um, there was one Latino um, up the block okay. called Tirado. Um, Tirado, okay. Tirado, Tirado. He's a doctor. Um, and, um, <coughs> and when Rafi tells me the idea, I'm like, that's kind of crazy. Like, I, so I didn't believe in the idea in the beginning. Um, but, but he started without me. He's like, and then I said, all right, no problem. I'm following. Because <laughs> whenever I did something, he followed me. Right. So like when I did the recording studio, it's not that it was his thing, right. it was my thing, right. but he, he didn't let me do it alone. He was like, nah, I'm with you. Right, right. Together with That's a friend right there, bro. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's family, he's my brother. Basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, so when he did this, I was like, kind of like, oh, shit, yeah, he's good. That's how long, you know? See. But, but um, then I followed him, yeah. you know, and we, we did this together. So we reached out to, we already had a, the studio was two blocks away, right. three blocks away. Um, but when we started looking for location, we started thinking about, all right, where was the biggest migration of Puerto Ricanos? Where did they come? Mm -hmm. Where did we land? And we landed here in the South Bronx. In the South Bronx. You know, if you look at the 70s, like the biggest migration of Puerto Ricanos was the South Bronx. Right. Um, and you can have, you can hear um, the music, the salsa music coming from the windows. Yeah. You know, back then, like, I wasn't around. But when you start reading all the literature, right. um, that's how they describe it. Right. You know, they describe the South Bronx as an extension of Puerto Rico. Basically, yeah. Um, so, so there was no other place that we would want to be, right. but in a place where where it caters to our lineage, right. to our heritage, to our to our history. You know. Yeah. Um, so this wouldn't work as well in Brooklyn. Right. Gotcha. It, it wouldn't work. Location counts for a lot. It wouldn't work yeah. in Queens. It, it only worked here. And if there was another place that we would be, it would be La Marquena, the 116th Street. Right. Because the migration went like South right. Bronx, mm. Marquena, 116, yeah. that whole area. Um, but I don't think it. it I don't even think. I don't think it would work. No. There right. Because La Marquena has already. So La Marquena has gone through gentrification several times. Yes. So it went. It was the Italian and the Irish at one point, right? right. Mm -hmm. And then the Puerto Rican <coughs> came in and. You know, se quedó con la marqueta, right? So yeah. it turned into la marqueta. But then if you um, see now, marqueta's not the way it used to be. 
Now, now the Mexicans came in and right. they took over the right. whole block, so everything there is Mexican. Right. And there's going to be another gentrification. Of course. Like, it's going to continue to change. Right. You know, every so often, every 10, 15, right. 20 years, it'll change to a different demographic. So right. what happens is that we as a people, we start, we, we come into these areas, and then, and then we kind of, um, our children start to go to better schools, and we start to make more money, and we start to try to, then we start working our way out of this area where it would be called, like it would be called the hood, it'd be called, you know, the, mm -hmm. back then, the ghetto, and yeah. you know, and you're working your way out of that, but in, in the ghetto, in, in, is where you have all the culture, it's where you have all the richness in, 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 in what we, who we are. Right. Um, so you would see all of us, you know, working our way out, you know, either through bodegas or through educating our children or, you know, and, and now we, we have enough money to buy a house mm -hmm. to go into New Jersey or to go upstate right. or to go into Connecticut or to go on Long Island. So we yeah. start moving out of these areas that kind of we, we that made us and then another group of, of, of people come in, mm -hmm. you know, and now they start to work their way out, right. you know. Right. So, so that's gonna over. That's gonna come and bring another, you know, uh, facet of people yeah. in the next ten years. You yeah. know, who knows who's gonna land there. Right. Yeah. Um, but the the South Bronx, it's always the South Bronx going to be the it's South Bronx. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. always you know those people yeah. that want to call it so bro and nah, change, it change to, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes, they are doing a really good job of gentrifying it. Mm -hmm. Yes, the South Bronx has changed a hundred percent. Right. If we don't, but but what I think is different now yeah. is that people like myself are not selling. No, we're right. not leaving. We're not allowing them to. Right. They're coming. They're coming yeah. here. Right. Yeah, they're coming right. here. Even so though they right. moved away right. to New Jersey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Connecticut, look at say, yeah. mira, Friday night, Saturday, oh yeah, yeah. Saturday night, yeah. you know, so Port we, Morris. So the the whole landscape has changed here in the South Bronx. Right. You know the the the. Um, when you look at the skyline in the South Bronx, yeah. you know, now you see luxury buildings. Yes. Like $3,000, $4,000 apartments. Like, yeah. really, mm -hmm. like, who's catering to that? Right. Like, you're not gonna, we're not going to immigrate into the South Bronx anymore. Right. Because who's going to pay? Who's going to leave Puerto Rico and immigrate to the South Bronx when the, when the, when the highest rent is maybe 6000 a month? Yeah, yes, you want to get a yeah. penthouse. You know, yeah. 4000 for a studio. Yeah. You know, a thousand, you, you don't see a thousand, a thousand. Right. No, you never, you never So the that. landscape has changed. Yeah, of course. Drastically. And it's going to continue to change. Yeah. yeah. Um, but so as long as the roots are here and the people yeah. maintain. Oh, these roots are know, not going anywhere. They're not well, going we, anywhere. we have to keep our roots, you know, our roots, yes. you know, to the ground. And, and so a lot of the businesses in this area are still Latino owned, Puerto Rican owned. Right. And we're just not moving. No, they're not. No, we're, still, we're still making grounds. <clears throat> right. well, I think we've educated ourselves to the point where we don't have to leave here for greener pastures. We can leave, we can live in the greener pastures, but keep the roots here where our yeah. businesses are and everything and still build the community and keep the community sound. Yeah. Even though you got the big buildings coming up and this and that and everything, but Fort Morris is the place to come yeah. for good yeah. Latino culture. Look at when you yeah. come in. Yeah, this is amazing. Yes, it um, is. Willie. Will you be able to give us a tour of your distillery? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. So, great. listen, guys, we will be back shortly uh, after this break, and um, we will uh, come back with a tour of Port Morris Distillery. Don't go anywhere.
start recording in five, four, three, two. Puerto Rico, uh, you you built this. Yeah, yeah. So this is this is the original still Puerto Rico. Okay. Uh, the same type of still that you see if you go into somewhere that's not the Puerto Rico. Right. Stainless steel. Uh, it's 55 gallons. It's heated from the bottom. Right. Um, the, you start boiling the the alcohol or the wine, you know, that, that we have in there. Right. Because our uh, fermentation turns into a wine. But once it starts to evaporate, it goes up the the campana uh, over the top into a not a condenser. This is this is where all the steam drops, any of the imperfections drop to the floor. Then then the steam comes back up and goes into a condenser. With this supposed to be a gotcha. condenser there, right? Okay. Um, so we did use this for about two years. So what are the ingredients that go in here? For so uh, so our ingredients, I can't tell you. Oh no, yeah, because that's <laughs> got gotcha. you. That's our secret. <laughs> But we do take our fruits right. and, and our brown sugar, right. um, and we that's our fermentation process. We, nice. okay. Okay. we have fruits um, and brown sugar and yeast, okay. um, and that, that goes into a 55-gallon tank, okay. and that fermentates anywhere from 15 to 17 days. Sometimes it can take longer depending on the temperature of the room. Right, right. Um, this is not a temperature. If we had it controlled, we can probably get right. it down to about 15 days. Right. Okay. Um, so even less. Right. Um, so climate is... Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very important. Yeah, it's very important. And this is the one that takes how many hours? This would take time? about maybe five to seven hours to finish our run. Right, gotcha. Full run. Gotcha. And then what you ordered? So we, the new still. The new still, right? That which is there. this way. Yeah. Yeah. The new go over now. Over there. Let's go over there now. So this, this is a Christian car okay. up from Germany. Okay. Uh, and it's the same concept. So now we heat this with steam. Uh, Look at the spaceship. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's, it's awesome. And this is what you would see in any any distillery. Okay. You know, that's, that's modern. Um, what happens is you boil our wine. So the difference between this one, this one holds two fifty-five gallon drums. All right. So you know, right? I can do okay. two fifty-five. So I can do one hundred and ten gallons there. That one I can only do fifty-five. Okay. Um, once I fire this up, right. I'll have my first drip in about an hour and a half. That's wow. Great. So what happens is you start boiling it, the alcohol burns much quicker, it evaporates much quicker than the water. Right. And the alcohol starts to evaporate, and it evaporates up the belt, over the top, into this condenser. This condenser is filled with water that has a coil in there. And the minute that that steam hits that coil, it's surrounded by cold water, it turns back into liquid, bringing out our first rip of the oh, nice. At about 150, you know, our first rip. Okay. We collect all of our people, all of our spirits, um, and then we we dilute it back down to, um, you know, a proper a proof. Engine. No, uh, another proof, and then we redistill it again. Oh, and okay. Then we we distill it. We're putting it through this this plate. So these are plates. Right. Um, and I have seven plates. So you ever seen? Uh, a bottle that says one time distilled, two times distilled. Right. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's that's so the reason. So our Tintoro is seven times distilled. So we distill it the first time, yeah. and then we bring it through our plates, which it's another six distillations. Gotcha. Um, so this would be considered seven times distilled. That's awesome. Of product, and then it goes back out. But when it comes out, it comes out at about 180 proof. Wow. Yeah, and then from that 180 proof, it, we start blending it down to either 92 proof. Or we leave some of it at about 110 proof to put in our eight barrels. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now the barrels, they are what kind of wood? So the barrels are American oak. Okay. Um, and they're one time used whiskey barrels. Oh. So what happens is we blend, we buy brandy barrels and we buy used barrels. And the brandy barrels gives you that nutty, smoky flavor. Right. Have. And then the, the wooden barrels that are used gives it that whiskey essence. Okay. So our normal has a whiskey essence to it, very nutty, very smoky. So you got the basically seasoned barrels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> like you would do uh, one of those uh, iron skillets, you season it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. So that's, 
That's amazing. So how long have you been in business? Um, We've been in business 10 years. We've been operating for eight years. Two years, years. we're getting on permit, getting right. on our ICT, uh, all that kind of stuff. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, this is awesome. Thank you yes. for the tour and um, for the abuelita in Toro. Oh, man. Um, I'm actually going to buy... I think we Me too. Yep, yep. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah, that was oh, awesome. Thank awesome. You for, Thank you so much, Willie. Uh, having us Pleasure here seeing you again. And Pleasure. For giving us the tour. Yes. The interview. Uh, mi gente, uh, if you want to come to uh, Port Morris Distillery, the location is 780 East 133rd Street. Yep. Yep. In the South Bronx. In the South Bronx. Come check it out. It's amazing. Um, and uh, I'm not going to. Uh, uh, what is it? You're not going to regret, regret it. it. Right. You're, You're not going to regret, regret it. it. You'll be here more and more. Yes. So, uh, thank you for watching El Latino Rido, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Again, thank you, Willie. Yes, and, thank you. Uh, we'll see you guys soon. All right. Have a good one, guys. Hasta la próxima.